Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy Mixo Gobble, man. Street certified news. And we back with another one. First off, man, we would like to thank y'all, you know what I'm saying, for y'all patience while we put together these long form docs. The channel has kept growing and growing. And man, we just really appreciate you guys, the viewer. We always like to shout you guys out. Um, this week, we're gonna go over the rise and the fall of Bloodhound Lil Jeff, man. Um, you know, from a young up and coming, just jumped off the porch rapper slash, you know, a lot of other things to uh, Jeff sadly losing his life on June 8th, 2024. We gonna kind of give you guys a little bit of background as well as his story, how he came up, um, as well as his tragic downfall. Um, hey, shout out to my boy X Man Rico. Um, he was able to interview a man who, you know, are allegedly part of the neighborhood uh, uh, that Bloodhound Lil Jeff was targeting the day he died. And even allegedly the man who fired the shots protecting his friend. Um, so we'll use that interview a lot of the times during this video just to kind of put context to some of the stories, man. I thought it was a great interview. If y'all haven't seen it, man, y'all go to X-Man Rico YouTube channel, uh, the Trap City. I think it's the Trap City part one vlog or part two, something like that. Man, hey, real quick, if y'all could just stop real quick, man, smack the like button on this video. We would really appreciate it. Um, when you guys smack the like button, if for some reason it helps the it helps the video in the algorithm, the video it gets out to a lot more people. And when I ask you guys, even though I know some of y'all hate that, when I ask you guys, man, it really does help, you know, with our like count. This week, the rise and tragic fall of Bloodhound Lil Jeff, man. Let's get right into it. Jeffrey, aka Bloodhound Lil Jeff, was born on July 14th, 2002 in Chicago, Illinois. Growing up in a household with an older brother, younger brother, and twin sister, Lil Jeff would be raised by both his mother and father, Big Jeff, who was also active in the streets of Chicago during the 90s and early 2000s. In early interviews, Bloodhound Lil Jeff admits that he only jumped off the porch in 2020, soon after graduating from high school. Before then, Jeff would seemingly be kept out of the streets by his older family members including his brother, father, and big cousin, known Drill City rapper, J.B. Bin Laden. The Bloodhound 079 BD set originally grew up with big homies who were the first GDs to click with BDs in the early 2010s. Before then, it was rare to see full sets linked with other gangs. Some gangs like the Hobos would be comprised of a number of different individuals from different gangs but the area of 79th and Maryland, from 76th to 80th, and Cottage Grove to Dobson, was the first to click up neighborhoods from formerly rival gangs, creating an alliance, 779, that would end up lasting over a decade. Trap City, MTV, Drill City, and the Bloodhounds, having an alliance over 10 years long, would cause a lot of the members of those neighborhoods to have family ties on both sides including Lil Jeff's own father, Big Jeff, and one of Jeff's best friends, 079 Vert, who is blood related to a number of Trap City members. During the beef, however, even Vert would be forced to turn his back on his family publicly after feeling that they backdoor one of his friends. Um, shout out to the boy X-Man Rico. Um, in an exclusive interview he did with um, uh, Trap City Rob, as well as I believe um, it was OTF Black and I, I forgot the other dude, but it was like three you know, prominent members of Trap City. Um, in his exclusive interview, man, he talked with Trap City Rob and Trap City Rob really breaks down in, in, in as humble way as possible that a lot of this stuff that happened with Bloodhound Lil Jeff was unfortunate and it probably shouldn't have happened. Um, he, they laid out how most of this was due to like some stolen jewelry, and there was some sort of discrepancy with some somebody let somebody borrow some jewelry and it never came back, something like that. But like we said, that kind of internal family beef worked its way up to the death of the dude's Z money. And once that happened, man, you know, it was all it was no hose bar, man. It was it was a straight on blood war. Um But in that exclusive interview, man, the dude, uh uh Trap City Rob, man, he he really, you know, kind of expresses uh, uh a little bit of uh you know, regret 
that it had to come that far, you know, especially because, you know, a lot of these guys were close or family or tight. These these communities have been linked together for over a decade. So, you know, I thought it was uh, I thought it was very, you know, poignant that the dude Trap City Rob, man, you know, laid out that, hey, you know, they would have rather this not happen. But, you know, some things just kind of happen the way they happen. That's what I want the club too. They say his dad from down here, Big J or something like that. Everybody Big J. Yeah. Anybody you got. Also, uh, his daddy is from down here. Yeah. Fuckers to hang with them. They know what they did. So okay. They know what they did. So okay, the bloodhounds. Yeah, it was. Y'all was cool. Everybody. Everybody that got a name. That was my homie. They stole the chain, bro. We tried like took it. He stole my homie chain. Mmm, who was that South J or some shit? No, no, nah, nah, brother. One of the other guys. In early 2023, it is rumored that Drill City member Z Money would allegedly be backdoored by Trap City members over money and jewelry. This would be the act that would cause Trap City member Vert to officially switch to Drill City after the backdoor of his friend Z Money seemed too slimy to condone. This act will also effectively end the over 10 year relationship the two neighborhoods had shared. Up until the death of Zaire Nelson, AKA Z Money, the reported beef between Trap City and Drill City was said to be over a stolen chain that was never returned. However, after the death of Z Money, who was a beloved member of the Bloodhounds, shootings and murders would escalate, changing the beef from an internal family disagreement to a blood war between two neighboring sets. Also after the death of Z Money, many Bloodhound members would tattoo Z's in memory of their fallen brother and begin to regularly ride through Trap City looking for revenge. Three months after the death of Zaire Nelson, on June 23, 2023, Trap City member Jaleel Goins would be shot and killed while riding as a passenger in an Uber near UIC University. Police reports claim that a shooter would walk up to the vehicle while it was stopped at a light and fire multiple shots directly at the passenger in the back seat, killing Goins instantly. After witnessing the murder of his passenger, the rideshare driver would drive to a hospital where Lil would be pronounced dead. This would be the first confirmed body of still young Lil Jeff would claim, claiming revenge for his friend Z Money, who Drill City believed was backdoored by Trap City over that stolen jewelry. Although it may not have been his first, this was the first time Bloodhound Lil Jeff name would ring as a shooter in the city of Chicago. This killing would also start a string of crimes committed by the young Bloodhounds. After the death of Lil, and with their name ringing bells in the city, the Bloodhounds would then go on a robbing spree, relieving a number of rappers and members from around the city of their jewelry. In late 2023, and after the Bloodhound gang had robbed a number of people in the city for their luxury jewelry items, they were riding high. A number of members would regularly wear these stolen iced out items on social media, which gained the attention of another group of young men who were in their own right terrorizing their side of the city, the near west side. It is unknown how, but in late 2023, two young men from the near west side neighborhood, BKN, aka The Jungle, named Monty and Lil Rob would get the drop on the bloodhounds, and Monty would rob them of two iced out Rolex watches. Watches that were previously stolen by the Bloodhounds would now be stolen from them. After the robbery, Monty and Lil Rob would take a page from the Bloodhounds and begin to flex the stolen J on social media in an attempt to embarrass the Southside Bloodhounds. Still relatively new to Drill fans, the Bloodhounds took this attempt to embarrass them very personally, and the fame and clout to be gained on the internet would fuel these young gang's need for revenge. On January 26, 2024, only hours after dropping their own location while flexing the stolen jewelry, Robert Boston, aka Lil Rob, and Monterio Williams, aka Monty, would be shot and killed while standing outside of their downtown high school. Immediately after the brazen shooting in the loop, rumors began to spread about who the killers were. Some people attributed the deaths of Monty and Rob to the killing of beloved West Side teen Tudor, who was allegedly killed by Monty while riding a Lime scooter in late 2023, while others believed that Monty was killed due to the robbery of the Bloodhound members for the Rolex watch he was wearing the day he died. Soon after the death of Monty and Lil Rob, 
Bloodhound Lil Jeff were destitute deceased in a number of social media posts, causing the streets to begin to believe that Lil Jeff had carried out the hit. The shit will start happening, and y'all know this by now. I went black for like a week, and poof. Gotta go after that one. Poof. I came back. Poof. I don't hear them niggas though. On February 16th, 2024, Bloodhound Lil Jeff, using the clout from the murders of Monty and Lil Rob, would drop his first single, I, gaining almost a half a million views on YouTube within months of its release, and submitting Lil Jeff as a real up and coming rapper from Chicago. For the next few months, Bloodhound members Lil Jeff, 079 Vert, and Q50 will release a number of songs and music videos collaborating with major Chicago rappers like Rico Reckless and G Herbo, even making a trip to Los Angeles, where it was rumored Lil Jeff and fellow friend and rapper Lil Schoon would sign record deals due to their massive buzz online and in the streets of Chicago. At the time that Bloodhound Lil Jeff and the Bloodhounds really started getting, you know, they foot in the door musically, they start working with dudes like Rico Reckless, you know, they were spotted in LA, uh, with G Herbo and, and it would come out later that they recorded songs with G Herbo. Around that time, there was actually a number of young Chicago rappers that were starting to build their buzz, both in the streets and musically. Um, if you haven't seen it already, man, y'all check out the documentary that we did on the dude of uh, Von off 1700. We kind of broke down, you know, his backstory and, you know, why some people think he's a kind of a cap dude and some people think, you know, he real. We kind of broke it all down. And at the time, he was one of the rappers that was really starting to blow up around the same time as Bloodhound Lil Jeff, um, as well as a number of other artists who would who was signed to Lil Durk's OTF label um, and another dude from the low end, uh, 800 TJ who at by this time has tragically also lost his life uh, due to gun violence. With all of the buzz surrounding Bloodhound Lil Jeff, in the spring of 2024, fans began to do their own research on the bodies claimed by the rapper. Some believe Jeff could have had as many as 10 bodies by June 2024, while our research found allegedly three or four. With the rumors surrounding how many bodies the Bloodhounds had racked up in such a short amount of time, Bloodhound Lil Jeff and his cousin Q50 will begin the plot on their next victim from Trap City. On June 8th, 2024, at around 5 p.m., Jeffrey Davis, a.k.a. Bloodhound Lil Jeff, was attempting to slide on a Trap City Zone 7 member, 66 and Rhodes, when a shootout erupted, and Jeff was shot and killed, chasing his victim towards the front door of a known Trap City home. The entire incident would be captured on home security cameras and posted online. Lil Jeff, attempting to kill a rival gang member, would give chase while shooting a man multiple times. The man, being shot, ran to escape into a house where another shooter opened the front door and shot Lil Jeff. Allegedly, after falling, Lil Jeff was shot multiple times, with reports stating that he was hit anywhere between two and 15 times to the chest. The home security footage also allegedly catch friends of Bloodhound Lil Jeff returning fire in the direction of where Lil Jeff was shot before fleeing the scene. Allegedly, Lil Jeff's friends would then circle the block after the shooting and recover the lifeless body of their friend, rushing him to the hospital where Jeffrey Davis, aka Bloodhound Lil Jeff, would be pronounced dead. In the aftermath of Bloodhound Lil Jeff's death, many fans on the internet would mock the way he lost his life, while others would celebrate the fact that their favorite rapper was actually living what he rapped about. While the man Little Jeff was shooting at would also be hospitalized with critical injuries, he would eventually survive, and his friend, the Trap City member who saved his life by killing Jeff, would be catapulted into internet fame. Trap City Rob, the man the internet would claim was Little Jeff's killer, initially would not want this fame. And in his exclusive interview with X-Man Rico, he would state that the events leading up to Bloodhound Little Jeff's death were unfortunate, but necessary. Something I wanted to ask y'all too, especially you, Rob, even you, bro, because I seen, I seen what you posted when you was like, uh, about the money part type shit. It's like a celebration. Oh, man. Yeah, it's something. Are we celebrating? And that's what got me a hit to you because they posted you on Reddit. Somebody sent it to me, 
And what I was talking about, what I'm speaking about really right now is negative attention. Yeah. It leads to bigger opportunities and shit like that. Yeah. But after everything that happened, bro, do y'all feel like y'all in danger after everything? Y'all names being put out there like that? This hood and shit? Like that house, you said that's your grandma's house. That's plastered all over the internet, bro. People looking at address up, riding past it. That's the internet, bro. That's the old lady outside. You know, I ain't gonna be outside. We chilling, man. Motherfuckers. I ain't saying my fuckers invincible and shit like that. Mark, I ain't never saying that, but I'm just saying we outside again. We was already outside before the world knew what was going on, gang. It's just the world don't know really what's going on because they get one side of the story. Mm -hmm. you know, we ain't really going to get two sides of the story because the, the, the second side of the story is already done. Game over. Mm -hmm. it's so it's like, what's the point? At the funeral of Bloodhound Lil Jeff, Bloodhound for Life flags will be flown by friends and family. Although her son died living out his gangster lifestyle, Bloodhound Lil Jeff's mother says that she was proud of her son. Only weeks after the death of Jeffers, Bloodhound Lil Jeff's friend and musical collaborator Lil Schoon would also be shot and killed. Allegedly, the one who dropped the location on Monty and Lil Rob that day back in January 2024, following the death of Lil Schoon, rumors would begin to surface that he was set up by a friend of his girlfriend. From relative obscurity, to beefing with his own hood, to becoming one of Drill Rap's rising stars, Bloodhound Lil Jeff would live a life most could never imagine in only a short amount of time. Whether he was the 10x killer he claimed in videos and on social media or not, the young Bloodhound from 79th Street built his name quickly into a young in front of rack not to be played with. However, just as quick as we witnessed his rise, we witnessed him fall through actions of his own. And it's your boy MXO Guapo, Street Certified News, the most reputable source for urban media, man. We really did our due diligence with this video. We took our time. We talked to a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Like we said, man, shout out to the boy X-Man Rico. While we was doing our research, he had dropped that interview and I called him up and I said, bro, this is like, this is great right here. You know what I'm saying? Because I was working on the story and this was a lot. They provided a lot of information in that interview. So I asked him, I said, hey, bro, I'm a young man. I'm going to use a couple pieces, man. So shout out X-Man Rico for letting us uh, uh, throw those pieces of the interview in the doc. Um, hey, man, you know how it go, man. You know, in these streets, the same way you make your name is how you could lose your life or how you could end up in jail. And hopefully this story is a cautionary tale for a lot of these young dudes who might be looking up to people like Bloodhound, Lil Jeff, or Von Off 1700 to say, hey man, I wanna be, you know, a known killer, known gangster too, man. You know, it ain't too many places that you can end up. And it's sad that before, say, you know, rappers like Chief Keith, it was clearly just dead or in jail. Those was your only two options. But now with this drill movement, the drill culture really in full force, it's sad to say, but gangsters are now being able to parlay, you know, their crimes into fortune and fame, which sadly is kind of sucking more young dudes into that lifestyle. Um, it's one thing when it's the money and the cars and the girls and the, but everything local, you know, it's in your hood, it's in your city. But it's the other thing when you could go outside and do some thugging and become, you know, world famous. And I think this dude, Bloodhound Lil Jeff, kind of showed you that even in those scenarios where fame and fortune is attached to your deeds, the real streets is always still lurking, man. And it's death for jail. It's your boy, Emory So Grappo, man. Street certified news, the most reputable source for urban media, man. We out. Michael Drake, his ass ain't get out that car, you know that?